Hey everyone, Reed here for Big Strong Book, and today I'm going over a short story from Roberto Bolaño's short story collection, Last Evenings on Earth. So as I mentioned in the channel introduction video, I am just a few short stories into the collection right now, and uh, yeah, but today's story is uh, Enrique Martin. Uh, so this story is similar to the first two, and um, I should mention, though, that this is the first time that I've read anything by Bolaño. Of course, I know him as the author of 2666 and the Savage Detectives, and he's this renowned um, Chilean postmodernist, uh, but I've never really dived into his works before. I've never even read a short story, and so I figured, you know, this book would probably be the, uh, the best way to start. And what I noticed with the first two short stories, and especially with Enrique Martin, is they deal with not necessarily the cliche or the stereotype of the tortured artist, but of the obsessive artist. And it's almost always viewed from somebody who is on the outside or who doesn't um, fully understand. Sometimes that's reflected because in the... Uh, like in the in the first story, it's about a correspondence between um, two writers who submit to short story competitions, and yet something tragic happens to one of them who is not the narrator, and so the narrator kind of has to deal with that, and you know tragedy comes in 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 that person's life. And then in the second story, taking place in uh, France during World War II, there is a poet who is kind of savaged by his literary circle and um, you know nobody really knows why he bothers kind of doing what he's doing and yet for them they start to read his work but he becomes more of a background person for them almost as if he is part of the foundation that their literature is built up upon um, and so for this story Enrique Martin so I'll just read the uh, the, the opening paragraph here because I mean Bolaño definitely knows how to open his stories, so this is, um, a poet can endure anything, which amounts to saying that a human being can endure anything. But that's not true. There are obviously limits to what a human being can endure, really endure. A poet, on the other hand, can endure anything. We grew up with this conviction. The opening assertion is true, but that way lie ruin, madness and death. So this story opens with um, Enrique Martin and the narrator uh, beginning a literary journal or a literary literary journal is started amongst these friends and uh, the the narrator gets some of his poems kind of shunted from publication of the first issue of the journal and he doesn't really take an affront to that although he, he kind of does, and so he kind of holds Enrique Martin, his friend who started this journal, at a little bit of kind of at an arm's distance, and he critiques some of his poetry lightly, um, and then they go out to dinner, and he notices that a change has happened uh, within his friend, and there's another uh, section I will read here um, that... Uh, kind of struck me and that I'll go into what I'll talk about here with just what I think Bolaño is trying to, you know, what he's trying to commentate on as part of the creative process as part of being an author. And so, um, so this, this is a little bit, maybe a quarter of the way through the story, but the quote is, uh, that night or at, at one of the other four dinners, the conversation turned to children. It was inevitable poetry and children. I remember, and this I remember with absolute clarity, Enrique confessing that he would like to have a child. The experience of childbirth, those were his words. Not to share it with a woman, no, he wanted it for himself, carrying the child for nine months inside him and then giving birth. I remember, as he said this, I felt a chill in my blood. So by this point, Enrique has a girlfriend and they have started um, or they, they are they're submitting articles to kind of a pseudoscience uh, journal 
and he starts to become more sensitive to criticism. Uh, and the narrator comes over to his house and, you know, kind of openly criticizes his articles. And he, the, the narrator doesn't think anything of it. But just with that quote alone, that he wants to, he wants the experience of childbirth not to be there, but to hold the child within him, almost as if there is a creative project that he hasn't really felt the true either pull to creativity or the just the focus of what his work truly can be. He hasn't found the, the, the true work or that all of his writing before has been meaningless. And, and Enrique Martin starts to become more obsessive. And one wonders that if this obsession is from his friend's criticism of himself that he lightly criticizes. And eventually with Enrique Martin, as, you know, as befits a lot of short stories, I suppose, kind of his life begins to fall apart, but yet he still becomes, he's still creatively obsessive, but it's not clear what he is obsessive about. Kind of poetry, but kind of something to do with mathematics and with a lot of numbers that he keeps writing on the walls. Um, and so the question is like, with Enrique Martin, does he want not only to see that creative process come to fruition, but does he want recognition? Um, I think that's a big part, but it's it's interesting because with, with that opening section of the story, when, uh, when Bolaño states that, you know, or the narrator, I'm, I'm assuming that Bolaño is um, part of, he is kind of vis-a-vis -vis the narrator, and he dedicates it to somebody named Enrique. Um, but he, when he says, you know, with that section kind of, a poet can endure anything, which amounts to saying that a human being can endure anything, but that is not true. You can say that poets, you can say that humans, we can endure, you know, any physical, emotional, social pressure, any social, physical test thrust upon us, but we can't. There's always a limit. And Enrique Martin might be of the people that, or the, the, the group of people that think that to be a creative means to always, to en endure criticism, to endure rejection after rejection after rejection. And that kind of in the writing world is what you're primed to do. You're primed to kind of bury, barrel on through rejections, but there's a limit to that. And at what point does that limit truly start to reach us? Is there a fine line to walk between creativity and taking criticism? If we take too much criticism, should that stifle our creativity? Should we put the creativity in check or should we expand it? But then we see here kind of with the tragic tale of Enrique Martin, by expanding our creativity in response to criticism, it leads us down a tragic and terrible path. Um, but, but so with that, what is Bolaño saying about what the duty of a poet is? If a poet has limits, I, I wonder truly as, as a reader of the story, can, can the poet really achieve anything if there is limits? If there is limits within the form, or, you know, is, is, is the poet just repeating himself or is there more um, to be added? And I know that so maybe getting a little bit into the uh, the, the style of his uh, short stories, but I found um, similar to the first two, but but specifically with this one where Bolaño's narrator is somebody who knows the subject or the focal point of the story quite well. It's always a friend. I kind of think that Bolaño is writing um, semi autobiographically. I I you know I. I think that to be the case, um, and yet at the same time, 
the, na the narrator is disinterested, but the disinterested narrator, because he's telling this matter-of-factly, he's recounting his friend just kind of but going through this tragedy, but he passes through it so disengaged, so detached. But I wonder if that, if that just kind of hammers home his, what he's trying to throw out in the air about creativity and criticism that ultimately those who dole out the criticism don't care or they just render it as too late if something, you know, if something tragic happens, that those who dole out the criticism don't bear the responsibility for what the artist does in response to that criticism. Um, and I, you know, normally I would think that kind of with long flowing passages it could become difficult to read. I mean, certainly Bolaño, at least within this short story, he's no, you know, he's no Faulkner in, in Absalom, Absalom kind of doling out these paragraphs upon paragraphs uh, where it's just, you know, blocks of text. Bolaño does that, but I find it flows quite well. And maybe that's because the narrator isn't fully invested within the story he is invested but he doesn't seem to be at the same time. And yeah, I find that quite interesting. And, and there's another point, I think, as I'm kind of wrapping this up that I'll get to. Um, he mentions uh, Enrique kind of at the beginning here that he uh, he wrote in uh, Castilian and um, Catalan with results that were fundamentally similar, though formally different, as in like there were there were differences within his poetry where he could express himself better in one but couldn't in the other. So there's, and, and there's a split in language, which is one creative only in their own native language, or can one be creative elsewhere? Um, and I find that interesting just with Bolaño, obviously he is, um, he, he writes in, he's Chilean, but he, you know, wrote in, in Spanish and I'm reading it now uh, translated into English. So so yeah, that's just that's just something fascinating. So you know, this story was, as I found with the other two Bolaño short stories I've read, it, it poses a lot of questions, and it kind of leaves this this dread over the creative process, almost as if there's a fire within Bolaño driving him forward, kind of as he's as he's writing these. He's trying to come to terms with his with though himself, his own creative process, and the creative process of those around him. Because I have to imagine that he is writing this story about, it's semi-autobiographical, he is writing these short stories about people he knows. And so, yeah, I, I think that that's very fascinating. Um, I look forward to reading more, and uh, and tomorrow I should have another video up on the channel with the uh, the next short story, so look out for it then.